Well, every feller needs a tractor every now and then. And behind me in this barn sits a... Nope. Wrong one. It's actually in this shop. It sits a 1964 Minneapolis Moline M602. She's a gasser. Pretty awesome tractor. It hasn't run in five or six years, of course, and the guy that the guy got it from also didn't have it running, so who really knows how long it's been since she ran. So makes sense that I would just show up and give her a shot, and then there's plenty of equipment around here. Of course, if we get it running, we're just gonna go test on it. And I'm sure it's, you know, it's, it's gonna be great. Everything's fine. It's gonna work out just fine. Well, here she is. You know, it's it's good. It's gonna be. We're gonna we'll get her running. This is before we do this. I gotta I gotta show you some of this stuff because it's that's it's really good. Get your eyes on these units. I may be mistaken, but I think he said this guy here was over 900 cubes, and uh, she's running on LP and. I'd put that at 300 plus horse right there, and that's that's no joke. Nice D, John Deere. This is probably, you know, when you're a kid growing up drawing tractors, this is probably what all of us drew, really. Well, maybe just me. Fun fact, that was my first word, John Deere. That's no joke. Another Moline. Another one, big boy here. These are the plow boys. And these are actually made right in Minneapolis, Minnesota, or used to be. So it seems fitting that I would snag one up, you know. Little guy here, little ZB. And this is only scratching the surface. This feller's got tractors like you wouldn't believe. But anyway, back to the old 602 here. Let's get up on in here and see what we got shaking. Oh, seat's nice. Okay. Oh, oh, the spring still works on her though. Huh. Okay. Clutch is good. Of course, you got the right and left brake. No interlock. Sometimes they got a lever that flips over. That way you hit one and they both come down. These are nice in road gear. You can just ah, and then turn and brings you around. Got your torque booster 400 in here. Basically your high low. Throttle. Some more. No, I don't know. Just some stuff. Oil pressure temp. She's got, that can't be right. Has way more hours than that, I'm sure. Fuel and Whatever this is, let's just, we'll put it over here to max. Leave it there. That'll be good. Okay. Well, that's pretty much what we got up here. This, apparently that means leave her, leave her up here. You don't want her to go forward. Let's make sure that's going to work. Just great. Hopefully, if we get her running, we find something with a three point and snag onto that. All right, I gotta get down now, somehow. Oh, the 602 here was a really short run series tractor. I think about 2,900 of these gassers is all that was made. And then it was replaced by the M670 right away, which of course had a little more horse to her. 
But this is a nice row crop tractor, three point on her. About everything a guy would need, I guess. About uh, 50 horsepower is what they claimed on them anyway. And this one appears to have my favorite stuff, which is, you know, just a, a lot of really good digital stuff happening here. Uh, which is, that's great. Let's see this side. I don't know, that looks to be out of a car. That's good work there. These are really brittle. No idea. I'm not sure what that is either. Maybe you don't need it. And let's see. Um, oh, yeah, that's, that's aftermarket. That's good. And uh, the battery's gone, of course. It's a nice cable, though. Goodness. That's pretty much what we're working with. I don't know. I'm gonna take this off here and then we'll get a closer look at what we got going on, I guess. What's really nice about this old iron is it's not half inch, she's a 9 16. And if it happens to not be a 9 16, well, you know, then she's a 5 8. That's it. Goodness. If you could picture the Titanic for a second. That's the size of this guy's lawnmower. He does not mess around. technique to this. It's just called ruin your back. Here's a better look with the hood off here. This guy's got some more room into this mess. I'm sure all that tape makes it better. But manifold looks good. She's not cracked. I don't see any holes in it. It takes decent. The guy was nice enough to let me know that the carb I should probably bring a kit. And you can see there, she has just been beat on more than a cabin screen door. So chances are the needle or the float was sticking, or maybe both. So we're probably going to have to start in this region. Uh, radiator looks. Okay, at least it ain't got any holes in her. Oh, let's see. What we got? Probably bone dry. I'll have to figure that out. I think I got some water. And I did bring a cap. And I learned from the uh, K20 episode, I even brought a coil. Believe it or not, none of this stuff's important. So it gives us some room to work here anyway. But I think where we're gonna have to start on this is the old fuel maker happener. Well, right, let's dig in and get this carb off. First thing is a choke. Oh, I should actually test this. Kind of surprised it's broken. Remind me to try to fix that later because I think we're going to need it, you know. Or we could just zip tie it. All right. Hey, so far everything's turning. That's great news. Oh, clamps already. She's loose. That's fine. Oh, okay. She's got the auto eject clamps on her. 
That's handy. I think I'm going to drop it down first. Then I'll pop the fuel line off the back because she's a little hard to get to sometimes. Squished in here between the block and the carb. Made in USA. Guy just doesn't see that very much anymore. That's not froze. That's good news. There. One beat the piss carb. Some of you fellers might be looking at this and going, wait a minute, how come the carburetor's here on the bottom of the intake and not up here? And everyone's kind of accustomed to the carburetor being on the top of the intake and then the fuel and air is drawn into the intake. This is called an updraft carburetor where the air comes in and then it's lifted up into the intake. And uh, really common, that was basically the carburetor back then. And a lot of aviation uses updraft carburetors. They don't make a ton of power, but they're almost impossible to flood. The guy was nice enough to push this back into the shop for me today, so I didn't have to work out in the elements, but I'm gonna fix on that carburetor back here in the light. And she's in really rough shape. In fact, I can't even read the model number on here. It's been beaten so bad, so I really hope the kit I got works because there's about 50 different types of kits for these carburetors and they're used everything from the Moline's to the Deers to Massey's. It's a mess. This guy's a stand-up feller. He brought a guy some tacos. It's even got sauce on it. I'm gonna sit down and have me some lunch and then I'll get to the old carburetor. You know, uh, Feller can never have enough chainsaws. You just, you gotta have a spare and then back up. Yeah, sorry about the wind out here, but it's just the way she goes. Typical day in Minnesota. Goodness gracious, this thing was just cake. Okay, let's just get right into her, I guess. Alright, first look, slide this down, floats are moving, and the needle is not. Get in there and look now, see that needle in there, when the float drops, that needle is supposed to drop with it, allowing fuel in, when the floats raise, that needle lifts and shuts the fuel flow off here, but it's stuck, so she wasn't getting any fuel. And that is undoubtedly why they were just beating on it right here. You know, with the old carb adjuster 200, you guys have seen me do that. You just kind of, you know, what we're trying to do is work that needle loose in there and get all the junk in there. So I'm going to throw this in a bucket of gas and just let it eat on that for a while and try to clean it up. You don't need a lot. Just sprinkle it in there a little bit. That'll eat. All the old fuel makers cooking over there. I'm gonna start it on the digicals and first thing I want to fix is this because it's spliced back there, but there's plenty of room here. It just I want to get it routed up here correctly. And then around the corner, and that'll get this out of the way, and then I can put the right end on it. And then we're gonna take care of this. A lot of resistance built up in all of them there. So we get rid of that. That should be pretty easy and get her tucked away. I'm gonna be in here anyway putting cap and rotor in and whatnot so I think I'm just gonna replace this positive lead as well. I don't know. Maybe save me some time in the future. Because it's pretty, I mean, she's crispy, you know. 
get these off here. That's, uh, yeah, that's not factory. That side don't look much better. And of course, I didn't bring any of these, so we might have to dig through some junk. Ooh, look at this. I kid you not, hanging up. Oh, that one's no better. Well, tried. Yeah. There, that's, that's a little better anyway. While I was farting around with that, I noticed this keeps falling off. Then also this wire, um, yeah, that's probably not supposed to be like that. So I'm gonna dig around and see if that guy will let me borrow one there, but let's see what we got going on here. Oh. Oh boy, yeah, she's, good thing about that. This looks newer-ish, here. Let's loose in there, tighten that up. We'll replace the points anyway, I think. Capacitor, clean all this up. And uh, throw a cap on it, and I need a coil wire and a sparkulator one back here. I think I could just squeeze that down a little bit and then Stick her back on. Got to be stuff in here that we could. Let's see this. But, uh, yep, we're gonna try to use that, I guess. And uh, here's wire pile. Let's go around this side. Oh yeah, we got wires. Plenty. We'll make that work. Well, I'm supposing on a guy I should at least, you know, pretend to look at one of these plugs since I'm in here putting this wire in anyway, you know. Guy already told me it turned over and that's why I'm skipping all that rigmarole. That doesn't feel right. Uh oh. It's turning, but it has like a really soft, I'm going to strip and ruin your head feel to it. Ooh. Um, well, I guess we're just gonna put some fire on it. See if that helps. Get the old finger burner 200 on her for a couple minutes and that ought to make a change in time. Well, we got grass and all sorts of stuff on fire in here. Smells good. Now, I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm gonna abort. I'm just gonna snug her down and we're gonna do the right thing and just pretend we looked at him. Yep, mm -hmm. good. All right. Well, a guy stopped by and I made sure I could borrow on this wire here for this back cylinder. And he says, You know, I got a brand new kit for that. So that was really nice. And I made one up here for the coil because that one was shot. And if I had patience or any sort of finesse, I would uh, just make the whole kit. But truth be told, I'd rather low crawl through barbed wire in a hailstorm. So we're just gonna go with the one. I'm gonna spray out the distributor here. And before we replace the points, I'm gonna bring you on in here and kind of show you how this works, just a skosh, and then show you how to set points just enough to get you home if you don't want to do it the correct way, which is a dwell meter and feeler gauge. Some of you fellers might know this, so hit the fridge for a cold snack, I guess, but if not, here's your uh, distributor cam, which I'll show you closely in a second here, but basically rotates and shoots lightning down the lightning whirler here and this goes down the wires to the sparkulators. But I really wanted to show you the points here in, in this cam, which is why I cleaned it. See how there's a flat side and then a high side. And when that high side 
bumps off this point, this opens the gap here. And when that closes and opens, that's what actually is initiating your spark. And if I take my, as I got it open, my lunch card to one of my favorite uh, establishments, I can slide that right in between the points. Any good business card or card like this will work. Uh, matchbook, sometimes the box that the points came in. Basically, if you could try to retain that gap in there, that's good enough to get you home. And a way to test it is, once you get the new points in, turn the ignition on and be careful. You might get a out of the system. You can rock this back and forth and you should hear or see a spark right here and you're good to go. I'm not sure where I'm at, but I keep hearing dirt bikes and someone sighting in a rifle. I'm really liking it. Anyway, back to this side. I just got a get a fitting on this wire here. This fell off in my hand. I'm glad I just did it now because it was going to happen anyway. Then we can uh, finish up the carburetor and we're getting really close to trying to fire this thing. Finally. Wow, what the? Okay. Dang old wind. Stop it! Stop! Anyway, I've got to clean these car pieces up. And of course, I cut my finger all the way down to my hip bone, so that's going to feel really good. But it's so windy out here, I think I'm just going to get this done and and then I'll uh, get back to you. Basically the goal here is just to brush it better than you do your teeth, fellas. This is coming right off. Uh, new needle, seat, float, adjusted down, quarter inch it says. And pay attention to your kit. Some say adjust with or without the gaskets. Cleaned everything out, brushed everything, so I think we'll throw this back on and See what she tells us. That's definitely not right, but it was on here before, so let's just roll with it. Hmm. I don't like the way it's fit. That'll work just fine. Yeah, I think this is all done. Even ran a real cotter pin through there. And thanks for reminding me on the old choke. I got that going. And uh, just use stuff like this or whatever you got laying around and just soak it, the whole thing. And then just work it back and forth. If you stretch this over the wire, you'll find where it was sticking which for me was right here, where it's rusted. And then really just worked it apart. And then she came back around, so. On to fuel. For you younger fellers, this is basically your fuel filter. Back in the day and how all this would work is you open your valve here and fuel would flow in. And once the bowl filled, it would gravity feed fuel over to your carburetor. And all the dirt and sediment would sit down in this glass cloak. Well, you can just scrape this and take that out. And there's a great example right here of all that uh, junk in there. So I think I'm going to pour about 114 billion gallons of fuel in here and let this flush out, clean this, and throw her back up. Then I'll just put a couple gallons in and see if we got any leaks. Jeez, this thing is full. Okay, we'll see what we got going on. Yeah, that's nice and clear actually. So that ain't bad at all. 
So, we'll put the bowl on and let her buck. There we go. Uh, let's see. I know she needs water, but we can wait on that. Oil is definitely bad, but I don't have the fixings to change it, so that'll wait. Uh, I think we'll just go find a battery and we'll start cranking on her and see what happens. I really like this guy's shop. He's got one or twelve of just everything, which is perfect. Uh, let's see. There's a battery. That's a big one. Uh, 950. Oh, C7 popped. 950. That'll work. Get on up here. Okay. This, this doesn't look correct or right. Because my leg's going to be there. But let's see if we can sneak it back here. Maybe. That. That's... These are the wrong posts, so that's not going to work. Great. This one's off the service truck from the 1900s, but it'll have to work. Slide in there. What is this stuff in the way? Well, I'm back to the big battery again. I got the battery post adapter Rooney 9000s on here, and that'll help get them on. Is that loose? It is. Great. Fix that later. And then a guy got to thinking, well, I should just check the old spark something down here, and sure enough, I got nothing. I sit here and rock this guy, and uh, I got no spark on them points. Right there. So, suspecting the coil at this point, and I did bring one, so I'm gonna go ahead and snip that out and snag a new one and then try the whole setup again. Hey, you know, a guy's not quite sure what it is, but it seems like everything I touch either has no spark or no brakes, or both. The model is uh, the cheapest the parts store had. She ain't slipping there. Well, can't ever get nothing done because I'm dropping everything. This should be the easiest thing to do right now. and I'm just struggling with it. Okay. Oh. New lightning maker on her. Completely guessing on throttle. Keys on. Let's go. Let's go again. Here we go. Come on. Yep. Uh oh. Nothing. A little bit of choke action. Nothing. Hmm. 
starter smoking too. I just uh, I got nothing going right here. Okay. Even though I was getting sparked before, I went ahead and widened the gap on the points. You know, just a just a just a tinge. Uh, let's see if that does anything. Nothing. Choke. Give her some gold. Nope. Started smoking again. Well, this is interesting. Hmm. You know, I think I'm just going to give her a couple huffs of the old flame juice here. It should at least bang off a couple times. There we go. Oh, gotta go around this way. Come on now. Well, do that again, I guess. A little choke this time. starter break for a minute. Since she's firing, I think I might as well pour some water down the old radge, just in case. Vernon. 602M. Yeah, that was the last feller's name, I guess. Old Vernon. That should probably be the tractor name. Makes sense. I think she's probably a fuel delivery issue at this point, but the drain plug on the bowl, is, she sees, otherwise I just pop that out and make sure she's dribbling. So I probably have to take the carb all the way off. And I'm losing light. So I'm going to try to bottle feed her, you know. But first of all, don't ever, ever, even if there's a fire, do what I'm about to do which is trying to start a tractor right next to it. Uh, dangerous, don't do it. But I ain't got any options, you know, backs given out. I can't get up and down over and over and over. So let's see what happens when we do it this way. find the sweet spot here. Oh, the old 
battery smoking on me again. I'm going to try just a little bit of the old gasoline. I like to put um, some two stroke in this, and that'll give some lubrication to the old top end. cylinders it's shooting stuff way up in the air go again battery's getting hot Floats. Come on, Vernon. Jeez. Well, I think the carburetor's coming off. Um, I mean, there's not a lot to these. We definitely know we got spark. She fires, turns over. But she just doesn't want to keep running. And the only thing that's going to, you know, do that, guys, is uh, she just ain't getting any fuel. So off we go again. Great. Well, I rebuilt the carburetor again, basically. And this time I adjusted the floats differently to allow more fuel in. And verified that I didn't have any blockages in there, which I didn't. And set the idle butterfly a little bit differently and then I worked out the needle a little bit so I hooked it up to the carb without the bottom half and I just sat here and played with the floats and made sure that it was shutting and allowing fuel the way it was supposed to and I just kept doing that for oh I don't know five minutes so the needle could get used to the new seat you know they gotta be friends we got her all back together again so we'll uh, give her one more shot and the sun is, she's down. So I got maybe 40 minutes and, and um, we're out of light and I ain't got any light in here. So that's, that's going to be that. I gave her just a couple tickles of timing on the other side. I don't know, we'll see if that does something. <laughs> Sounds the same. Oh, battery cables are down. Might have to just drag her down the road. Hmm. Well, the battery finally got tired, so. Got that hooked up. Got the January. Because I just uh, ain't got no power down here. So we'll keep going. I think I found the sweet spot of levers and buttons and cables and how many knocks to give her. So let's keep on trying.
you guys are gonna give her just one more crack. And then I gotta, gotta pack her in. And I'll see if I could just, you know, bottle feed it a little bit this time. I don't know if that'll work or not, but worth a shot. <laughs> Finale. She uh, she runs. Eyes are burning, but she just she ain't pulling fuel. So I don't know what the deal is with the carburetor. Uh, she, she did like a lot more timing though. So I wonder if it ain't something with a little bit of valve drainage overlap. Who knows? But anyway, I definitely don't have that carburetor. And, I ain't spending the kind of money they want for one of them puppies. So, I think we're at the end of the road and it's actually just gonna stay here at Andy's, I think. Great. If a guy had just a little more time, maybe a couple more parts, I don't know, maybe I could get it. But Hard to say. Either way, it was a good time. This is the reason a lot of projects just sit. People are just afraid to fail, you know, but to heck with that. You're never gonna know unless you get out and just try. So, get off your butt, get out there, start spinning wrenches. See you guys next time.